And here is a uh, uh, World War I uh, khaki officer's uniform of the Signal, Signal Corps. Uh, he was a colonel um, and was in World War I, actually. Um, there's the overseas uh, stripes on the, the left sleeve. And uh, of course, at that time, the Army Air Corps early on was part of the Signal Corps. But this has nothing to do with, uh, with the air service. It's just regular Army. The 74 flags are right here. These flags here, that's what these are here. And there's the uh, red on white and the white on red. This is a, uh, the typical World War II ice jacket. Uh, this gentleman was 82nd Airborne uh, Infantry. He made all three jumps in Europe. Uh, he has uh, all, have his other cord. You can only wear two at a time, but I do have his other cord. And of course they have the uh, ruptured duck uh, for his discharge from World War II. All right, this is a typical basic, uh, the gray green uniform of the United States Marine Corps. Um, and you can see he has the, the, the discharge thing, uh, which is unusual to find those on. Okay, this is a typical uh, World War II blouse, enlisted blouse, uh, of a gentleman who was in the 33rd Division um, in the Pacific. He was a sergeant and he had uh, two and a half years uh, overseas. Uh, he was infantry. And as you see, he has the, uh, the discharge, the ruptured duct for discharge. And usually the, the combat infantry bed is usually up here, but this gentleman wore it on his pocket. So however they wear it, that's the way I display it. This here is a typical uh, a khaki, what they call the Panama khaki uniform of a U.S. chaplain uh, who served in World War II and Korea. Um, he has the uh, Soldier's Medal, the Bronze Star, which is going to Y, and then you have the American Theater, Asiatic Pacific, and the Victory, and the Occupation, and he has the Korean Service and the United Nations for Korea, but he has two battle stars on the Korea, which means he was involved in two battles in Korea, which is kind of unusual for a chaplain, you know, to be absolutely be right up there, in a, but he was. All right, this is a typical uh, blue Air Force uniform. Uh, in the, um, right after the Vietnam period, this fellow here was originally a Marine pilot uh, who flew four uh, combat missions in, uh, in Vietnam. And when he came home and got out, he still wanted to fly, but there was no Marine Corps bases close enough for him to fly, so he had to join the uh, Air Force reserve so he could fly and which he wasn't too happy about <laughs> being a marine but he's on this uniform as a typical air force pilots thing that he qualified for and he also entitled to wear the uh the navy marine corps pilot's wings all right now this is the typical uh, late war vietnam uh combat jacket uh but i don't know who the fellow was he, he's taking the name tags off but uh he was 101st, 101st Airborne, was also a jungle, jungle expert, which is what this here is. You can't see the patch, but it was a jungle expert. And he was a staff sergeant, and you can see where they hit, he has removed the, the U.S. Army, his name tag, and the, uh, which was probably his jump wing, you know, which would have been in, in subdued material. All right, now this is the typical um, early, uh, the Persian Gulf, the first uh, Persian Gulf War, uh, is what they call the chocolate chip camo. Uh, and when you see the guy also took his name off of it. But that's the typical thing the guys were when we first went into the Gulf. And he was the uh, first, first cavalry. Got it. 
All right, this is a typical uh, Marine enlisted dress blues uh, in the uh, 60s, 70s period. That's where this one, this fellow served. Uh, he was a master sergeant. He served in, uh, in Vietnam. That's what these, these, uh, these are all, this is this, the, uh, that's the pants in the um, Vietnamese service with the three stars, and this is the uh, one that the uh, Vietnamese uh, issued with the battle thrown at. And of course, that's a Marine Corps Good Conduct, that's the Army Navy Medal, and I forget what that one is. Well, right, this is the, this gentleman here. He was in the first Gulf War. He he, he was in the service for like twenty. Say one, two, three, four, five, six. So they, he was in like twenty-four years. Uh, he has two more hash marks to go on his sleeve. That's a, that's a typical beret they wear today. You can see the same thing here and the same thing there. It's a typical shield they wear, and everybody wears it in the army. And you can wear either DIs. You can wear your rank up there. It depends upon. If you're an officer, the officers always wear their rank. All right, this here is a typical, this is an Air Force um, uh, camis. It's what they call the coffee stain. Uh, it's for the, uh, use them in the Iraqi war, it replaced the chocolate chip. Of course, the man's got his name on it, thank God, and he's got one of his, uh, he was a sergeant uh, at that time. All right, that uh, is a typical, uh, what they call the BDUs. Uh, which has been replaced by these ACUs. They no longer use that uniform anymore. And this uh, the fellow, this is uh, uh, Sergeant Major Sloan, uh, right here in Fort Thomas. This is what they call the, uh, it's a night desert camouflage uniform. Because of all the little the little digital pattern and the color of it, it blends in, uh, I guess, with the nighttime desert. <laughs> 